All right, let's get you caught up on the markets at this hour as the Dow uh, logged its third largest point gain in history. We love that. Joining us now is Karen Kavanaugh. She is senior market strategist at Voya Investment Management, and David Bonson is managing partner and chief investment officer uh, of the Bonson uh, Group. We, um, we had January, ladies and, uh, and lady and gentlemen, and then we had uh, Davos, where everybody said this is going to last forever, and uh, these are the greatest times we've ever seen, and there's nothing to worry about. And since then, we've seen five and 600 points, either up or down, kind of routinely. The VIX is uh, suddenly back in play, but we've made very little headway. In fact, we're still down almost double digits. Um, what does that mean, Karen, about the rest of the year, in your view? That means the grind higher isn't going to be as easy as it was last year. But let's face it, the fundamentals are stronger than ever. The, the economy is, is accelerating. And, and we have corporate earnings that are, that are going to be double-digit growth every quarter this year. So I think that right now, especially in between earnings season, there's a little bit more volatility as, as investors take a look. And they look at way economic data or potential threats of trade wars a little bit more heavily. But I think that once we get these earnings in first quarter, that investors are going to say, what am I so worried about? The, these, these companies are getting it done. So I think we go higher, but I just think it's, it's normal volatility is going to be the name of the game. David, I, people like Larry Summers, every 100 points from the, from the election, he said was a sugar high and, and not going, going to last. Mm -hmm. So did we deserve 25, 26,000 on the Dow? Was, it, was that a real number or is the market now just... Uh, sort of validating what all the, the skeptics said. It, it, it shouldn't be up here. Or, like Karen say, is it, it says, is it still going to grind higher? And we deserve those, those, those big gains. I, I think that if you look at what the market multiple was when we were at 26,000 plus change, it wasn't that high, especially when you take out the kind of fang names that were really giving the huge premium it really depends, Joe. I'm a big believer in what we did with corporate tax reform. I think that that instant expensing, and I think that ultimately the repatriation, as, as the capital goods orders keep going higher, as that business investment piece that was missing throughout all of the Obama years continues to kind of resurface, I think you're going to justify the higher premium. But then on the other side, it, the tariff issue is a legitimate one. If they continue to press this, Beyond just sort of the negotiation posturing of it, if we were to kind of go down a path of a fundamental repricing around our global trading relationships, then I think that has to take the market multiple down. Absolutely, 26000 was justified based on, to me, how accretive to earnings, after-tax earnings, it's going to prove to be. We need more time to see that business investment play out. And I agree with what Karen said. The fundamentals of the economy are very strong. I saw an, uh, another, you know, it, it's great because the, the business press will, will always help build the wall of, of worry and skepticism. And today all the articles were that there was significant damage done to the technical underpinnings of, of the market uh, in, in the last two or three weeks. Is, is, I mean, Facebook as an example. Do you, do you believe that, Karen? Well, I think that it was a little bit of a dose of reality in that tech doesn't just always go up, up, up. But if you take a look at tech's earnings, they're still very, very strong. And I, I, I agree that the, the tax cuts are, are extremely important. And I don't even think they've really worked their way into the system yet. And we keep pricing in all the bad things that could potentially happen. What about the good things? Uh, those things seem to be falling by the wayside. I think that we're going to be surprised, pleasantly surprised, on the growth that we see this year as we actually do see these business pro policies work through the system. And I think that we're actually we're, we're being a little bit too pessimistic. Sure, there are things that could go wrong. And, and, and if we do have a, a global trade war that is concerning, it's not going to happen. So I think that there's going to be a lot of good things. So I think we will go higher. But like I said, volatility is, is what we need. And tech is not immune from volatility. And it's still a great space to be because if you take a look at earnings, they're, they're looking at more than 20% for the first quarter and the rest of the 2018 doing very, very well. So, uh, David, it, the market has seemed to divorce itself from, from Washington in a lot of ways. It, but is there anything on the horizon that, that I mean, is, is the 2018 election going to be uh, significant for, for continued advances? Is, uh, I don't know, more, more chaos, whatever you want to call it, between, uh, you know, the, the White House and Congress? Is all that, could that be a negative down the road? 
I would, I would flip it around. The market is going to have a lot more to do with the midterm elections than the midterm elections are going to have to do with the market. I, I would say that the Mueller stuff and almost everything that happens on a day-to-day basin, basis out of Washington, the market has ignored for literally a year and a half, will continue to do so. But I will say the socio-political aspect with big tech, cool tech, new tech, I think it's legitimate. I don't think they're going to be able to keep the outlandish market multiple they've had. So while I would share Karen's optimism about overall market levels, we feel good about being invested right now in risk assets. I would see a rotation continue out of that market leadership of big tech into value, which has underperformed for so long now, and into small cap, which will prove to be one of the biggest beneficiaries of corporate tax reform. So I I still think that you can have your risk positions on, but you're going to see some leadership change. And and the earnings are very strong out of those FANG names, but the multiple that was put on them before was just simply unsustainable. We'd rather go to where there is better pricing, better uh, entry levels and value that we can extract for our clients. Okay. So Facebook there was 168. It actually closed up a dollar or so yesterday. It was down. Did you see it at one point yesterday? Yeah, it was down like six percent. Down ten at one yeah. point uh, yesterday. Do you guys see the the only Dow component down yesterday? Do you see it? The only one. GE, GE. <laughs> down in the twelves. The market cap on GE now. Very sad. 110. 100, uh, yesterday at least 110 billion, which is less than Netflix. He is now. Okay. I'm just unbelievable. Anyway, Karen and uh, David, thank you both. Uh, do you know anyone named Joe? Either, I don't, either one of you. If, if you do, uh, wish them a. I know uh, you. A, well, you know me. Wish them a happy. Ha- yeah, happy, happy Joe na- Day, Joe. Happy National. I mean, there was Puppy Day the other day. This is. It's Friday, yeah. Friday was National Puppy Day. Is I don't know if there's a National Ben Day. Ben Lair's here. Do you? Uh, there's not a National Andrew Day. Uh, there is a St. Andrew Day. The St. Andrew Day. That's better. Uh, thank That's you. Better. All right. Anyway, thank you.